Let me hear you say pa 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 da pa 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 da pa 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 da pa 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 da pa 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 da pa 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 da pa 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 da pa da crazy as this thing called love just what I've been dreaming of. I can never figure out, oh, how you do the things you do. That's why I'm so in love with you. I like the way you make me smile. Mm-hmm. Boy, you give me butterflies. And when I look into your eyes, I'll see the future in me and you. That's why I wrote this song for you. I, I. you to know what I think of you, L-O-V-E-Y-O-U, baby, you've got what it takes to make your girl say, L-O-V-E-Y-O-U, if I met you in another life, and you asked me to be your wife, with grace and a smile I say, yeah, always now and forever. You be my one and only lover. Cause I like the way you make me smile. Mm-hmm. Boy, you give me butterflies. And when I look into your eyes, I'll see the future in me and you. That's why I wrote this song for you. I, I, I. Welcome to Tony Commander J.R. Kubokma Chesson Talk Show. Today is Wednesday, March the 22nd, 2023. What has this world got in store for us? We know in America, we're on the verge of crazy again, man. We're on the verge of crazy again. I am on the game with that. We've been through this for the past three years. And God save America. We're going to it again, okay? A president is going, facing indictment, the possibility of an indictment. So this is where we are in America. Our nation is is at unrest. Where would this lead us? Only God knows. But for us believing people, we got to pray. We can't stop. We can't relent. We can't give up. We got to pray for peace, especially in the United States of America. This is where peace emanates. Freedom, democracy, some semblance of rule of law emanates from this country. If this country goes into chaos, 
God bless the rest of us in the third world nations. What will become of us? Somebody just is serving me, sorry. What will become of us? So this is where we stand. And this is our faith. Okay? But right now, we're facing some serious consequences in our country. Some very, very serious consequences. Our president is out of the country again. He's been invited by the CIA to the United States of America. Every Liberia, yo, 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 about that situation. We don't know why. Is that because of this Wagner group that they say in West Africa, destabilizing African nations? Are they targeting Liberia? Is this why all this drug and weapon trafficking is going on in our country? Money laundering? Is George Weir and his cabinet involved with it? Or are they calling them to forewarn them of what to expect if we are targeted by terrorists? Where do we stand? Where do we stand? Our country is at a crossroads. Not only as it relates to our nation and people, but as it relates to every aspect of our social well-being. Money flowing into our country from everywhere. People want to impact our election. We don't even know we're going to have election. We don't even know it. Right now, we got so many glitches in the registration process. People are talking about you got better access to the programs to register with the NEC than actually going and standing online. But how many people got access to internet in Liberia? That's the pe- that's where people are complaining now. Many of the poor people are saying, look, man, people are saying go to the net. The people don't even know what internet, what net means. When they tell the people net, they think they are fishing net and things like that. He said, go on the net. What net? <laughs> it's so funny. I waited for my correspondent to come on Sam is currently on his way to Monrovia or somewhere like that, so he may be in traffic right now. But I waited for him to get where he's going because he had problem too. Because he, he registered, he said he registered and his address had a different number from what he had put them on, on the internet. So he had to stand online and wait through the process to have it corrected. We see we've, we're facing a serious crisis the possibility of a serious, serious, serious crisis. Too many delays. The process itself is too long. Just running the process is five minutes. Coming in, signing, doing what you got to do, and everything at the end process, getting your ID card. All of that takes five minutes. We know human nature has its own impact on everything. Some people will come in, they will have the wrong address, the addresses will not be full up, they will not have no addresses. And these things people have to tell them, oh, you gotta go over there and put your address in. Next person, why they waiting? Or somebody will have to show them what to do. Or they will come in, they will not sign all the documents. Even in America here, when, when we go to register, luckily, the system here is so fluid. 
because of years of running the process. In some states, we don't have no problems. Like in Rhode Island, we had to have lines here. We had to have lines. Except people working and most, many of the working people come after work. But besides that, during the day, you come in, nobody there. Most of the people going to work or they will come to, to, re to register and vote before they go to work. So that's where you will find the lines, either early in the morning or at the end of the day. But during the day, people working, people in school. So the lines are fluid. You can just come and go through. And even with that, you can see the issues that people have. Sometimes you go in, your document is not correct. You may not have this or that. Something will stall you down. And that five minute process may turn into seven minutes, an extra two minutes, or an extra three minutes. So if you have, it depends on the people who monitoring everything too. Now, if you come to a person, one of the, 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 the monitors, and they see your document is not correct, and instead of telling you to go over there and fix it, you, they know you can't speak English, they know you can't read and write, so they get up to help you themselves right there to put your address and everything, show you how to do it. That, that could take two, three minutes. So one person could end up taking 10 minutes just to register. And you got hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people in line waiting for the same process. It can't work. It can't work, man. It can't work. And people will feel cheated. People will feel cheated if they don't vote. Because what the use of us giving millions of dollars towards election and the process can't go on? We don't even know if the National Election Commission right now got all the money it needs. They needed $8 million. Did they get it? Even if it's $4 million, did they get it? How they will run the process if they don't get the finances to do the work? So what's the problem with our country? Something is wrong with our system of leadership. Something is wrong because we're going backwards, man. People will feel cheated if they don't vote. If you got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people in these different counties, and this biometric voting process does not work. If we decide to go back to the old process, how long will it take for people to register? People already complaining now that the April 9 deadline for the six counties right now that registering is too short. Because if you got people going online at 10 o'clock in the morning, and not being able to register at the four o'clock in the afternoon. That's a serious, serious, serious delay problem. Serious. Then you tell the people go online. Many of the people don't have access to the internet. Only those with phones and those who know how to do it. Many of the market women and the poor people complaining. We don't have access to the internet. You say go on the net. People didn't have fish in it. So what do we foresee? What do we foresee right now? Is this thing going to be successful? Will we have to revert to the old process? And furthermore, what is the status of the case of the CPP? with regard to the census and us knowing how many people in each county, how many people eligible to vote. We don't even know that. We got a census of 5.2 million people. How many of those people are of voting age? We don't know. We don't know yet. 
We're talking about the counties being demarcated. People being placed in the right places. We can't do that until the legislature act. They haven't even taken the census into consideration yet. There are too many lapses, man. Too many lapses. It, it looks like people been sitting down doing nothing. Because we know this, we knew the election was coming forever. We knew the election date, we knew the election deadline. How come all this process of registration is being delayed? Because by now we should know that if this system can't work, we gotta to revert to the old order, to the old system of registering people. But now we are supposed to be making the decision. All these decisions will have been made, whether to use the biometric system or do away with it for this election and stay with the old system. The census should have been done and we are sure by now, the legislature should have had the chance to evaluate the results of the census. But here we are, everything is backward, far, far, far backwards. Far backwards. No money. The system delayed. The process not working well. The process itself is a failure. Why? Because it cannot meet the demand for the election. You got hundreds of people lining up to vote and the system can't meet that demand per day. If you got thousands of people lining up, people coming at 10 o'clock to line up and not getting out there at four o'clock and the, 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 the voting center will close at six o'clock. Pray tell me now, how many people can you do in a day? Because if somebody come at 10 o'clock, we don't know when it says when it, when, when the center opened. Did they open it or nine or nine thirty or ten? When did they open? All that we gotta take into consideration. And from what I see, man, from, from, from just from these six counties, that we got nine other counties to do. And the six counties. Kicking off the program in the second day, we got too many complaints already. Some centers haven't even opened yet. Some centers, nobody been there yet. So where are we going with this process? We told you ever since that these guys can't handle this thing. They can't handle it. You can't try to run a patriotic program in a gangsterized environment. You can't. Everybody's stealing. Look at it. Look at the, the report that came out on Liberia from America. Look at the human rights report. That report alone depicts Liberia as a gangsterized nation where we have no law and order, where the government itself is a gang. Everything in that report has to do with the police. Huh? How can our police be the all our the gangsters in our country? You know, going against journalists, going against people in the city, going against citizens, taking delaying the detaining people, unlawfully detaining people, all kind of murders, extra the judicial. What extra the judicial mean? Extra means it's not under the judicial rule of law. We have the judicial system. And only the judicial system has the authority to order the death of people based on the rule of law. So if people are dying and being killed without judicial input, it's extra. It's extra. And where it's extra, that means the government is involved. The government are responding. No investigations. 
How many cases we got pending now and we can't get no good investigation for them? So they're killing with other law. With our justice. Our people just dying, dying, dying. Police brutality is extreme. How many reports of all of that? It's terrible in our country, man. We're facing terrible things. And to crown it up, to crown all the mess that go on in our country. We got an incident where our politicians cannot make up their minds. Ella Cummings has no vice president. Borka has no vice president. We are vice president in jeopardy because we're her party. We don't know whether they made up or not. But the opposition is not ready. They're not prepared. My people, let's take a step back and look at our country today. Let's be realistic. Something is wrong with our country. Something is wrong with the leaders, not even the leaders, the men and women in our country. Something is wrong. Our whole country can't be so backwards. Can't be so disorganized, disjointed. People can't, in our country can't be so filled with greed with jealousy, with power hungriness. I mean, it's look that everything is out of control in Liberia, man. Take a step back and look at our country. The opposition can't come together. Whether they want to or not, they can't come together. They can't. There's too much opposition. We're in the opposition. We're in the opposition. We're in the opposition. Too many oppositions. People fighting each other. Listen to Henry Costa. Now Henry Costa's name is thrown in the hat for vice president of Liberia. Nobody was expecting that. So how did that mystically come about? That all of a sudden Henry Costa's name is in it. That is the thing. Huh? And Henry Casa is pissed off because people don't want him to be vice president. People in his own party are against him. Taking. What the fuck? Excuse my expression. I didn't mean to use it, that word. But what Casa thought he was getting in? What did Henry Costa think he was getting in? That's a real deputy of movement. You got to step back and ask yourself. You put your hand in politics. And you don't know you got to have alliances and allegiances because you have opposition. Kasa is from another party. He's from the ALP. He expects for the people in the United Party to accept him with open arms when you're from another party. And there's a possibility the, 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 the United Party chairman, standard bearer, will select you as his vice president. You expect people in his party to welcome you. They will not welcome you. Come on, man, like human nature. And just by that fact alone, man, I see Casa crying on his show. That in itself, man, you know, at first I was listening to him. Then the way he started, the, the way he started showing the deep emotions and all the guys, and no, no, this guy don't understand politics. You don't understand politics. I can get mad. I can cuss, yes. I'm not running for office. 
I'm not running for anything. I want to see my country better. And when I see rogues and criminals persistently at the top of the leadership of our country, it pisses me off. It frustrates me. I told you how Ashwood Gale invited me on his show. I told you, I said, Ashwood, I can't come on your show. Because we're talking, I get frustrated. I may say something that you may not tolerate on your show. That's why I stay on my own show. Because the things that happen in Liberia are too frustrating. For a patriot, for a man who serves in government, for a man who loves my country, it hurts. It hurts. When you hear about the stealing, the, the, the just sheer stealing alone. But I get into a separate now. I get into a separate. You know, all along, I know my people corrupt. I know my people, you can't put 10 cents down like the wrong people will steal it. I know it. And there's no exception because you don't know who does these things. So there's no exception. And I'm not selective in my teachings. But now the stealing has just gone on so bad. And we're not getting any better. We're getting worse. We're getting worse. When you see the system getting worse than that, you yourself got to come to your senses now. And say, no, no, you can't be getting mad no more. You can't be getting frustrated. You can't let these situations get to you. And that's where I've gotten to now. I've already come to the realization that I got to protect myself, my mental health, my safety, how I address people. You know, people think I'm angry. Sometimes I am angry. I am angry. Because we have invested in a lot, a lot to see our country change and grow and prosper. We have invested a lot. And when you see that there's no change, you see there's no effort to make change. When you see even the people that you rely on to make change are stepping backwards or sidestepping or flipping or backstabbing. How do you address these things? When you see our nation where everybody wants something, how can you stop the frustration, man? We see all the young children coming up have no sense of patriotism, patriotism to Liberia. They have no sense of loyalty. They have no sense of honor and integrity as Liberian people. How do you deal with that? But now I keep beginning to accept it. I'm really beginning to accept it because as a Christian, I myself talk about a prayer of serenity. If I don't know the prayer of serenity and apply it in my own life, how can I tell other people to apply it in their lives? They can't apply. So charity begins at home. So I got to take all these advices I'm giving people for myself now. I can't change the corruption in Liberia. I can't change the massive stealing in my country. I can't change the massive dishonesty among my people. I can't change the massive unpatriotism that I see every day among Liberia. Liberians don't know what patriotism means. Yeah, maybe they know what love means. Maybe they know what love means. But love could apply anyway. That we, that we got different. We differentiate love. Even on a general scale, we talk about agape love. What is agape love? Deep love for father. That's the, the differentiated from sexual love. It's different for your, for your boyfriend or girlfriend love, agape love. That deep love for your father, for your mother, for family. It has nothing to do with sex. It has nothing to do with that love of the heart that 
separates you from the family. Because marriage is supposed to separate you from the family in a sense, not in reality, but in a sense where a man and woman will leave his mother and father and come together as one. The separation from the family with the joining with another family. That, that doesn't mean that you're leaving the family. That just means you're reaching a state of maturity where you gotta leave the nest. The nest is the home that breeds you, that educates you, that tells you everything about life, okay? So that's the nest, you're in your mother and father house now. But when you marry, you gotta leave the nest now. You gotta leave the protection of your mother from your father. You gotta leave the education of your mother and father. So that's a separation, that's a detachment. And you form this relationship with another person who's coming from another household that's supposed to have similar practices and teachings and, and doctrine. Whether they're Muslims or Islam or, or whatever they are, the religion doesn't matter because every religion teaches you to take care of yourself, your own. Okay, because even Satan loves his own. So they will bring that to join with you. So in this relationship, it's a new, they call it new vo. It's a new vo ideal of a family. Why? Because you're not bringing the idea from your home. This person not bringing the idea for your home. You're bringing two ideas together. And if you and this person must exist as man and wife, you must know how to maneuver and navigate your different teachings and principles and religions to coexist with each other. Especially when you start having family. Both of you got to decide which church the family will go to, which religion the family belong to. <coughs> Excuse me. I got this issue truth. I think that's a halogen something. But anyway, all that is encompassed in the new family. So there you are. The same thing with life, everything we do in government. Government is a marriage between the different societal groups, the different tribes, the different uh, entities in our society, organizations, businesses, everything is a marriage. And that is why our constitution of the Republic of Liberia it's the only document, the only document, listen to me, it's the only document that every Liberian must sign. Every voting Liberian, every participating Liberian, if you don't sign it, that means you are not in the system. You are void of the system. Because if you're part of the system, then you will be participating in the democratic process. Because that's why they call it particip participatory democracy. Because everybody can participate. If we don't participate, our democracy dies. That's why we got lawmakers. The lawmakers not there for themselves. They're there for the citizens. But it's just that in Liberia, our society is so backwards, man. We're so ancient. Our people just in the tribal run still. They haven't come to the real, the real ideal of living. Because when you're in a tribal society, when you're in the boost schools, when you're in a post society, you are not participating in your nation. You're not. Yes, we support the boot schools. Yes, we support the, 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 the polar society and all of that. But those societies are not formulated to teach democracy, to teach our people democratic principles. No. 
Most of those societies are linked to religion. They do what the God tell them to do. How the God tell you to live. That's the difference between the societies and the Western society. Because everything in our government, in our system is Western. If you're clinging solely to traditional, you can't exist in our Western world. Because you got to understand how to deal with foreigners. You got to understand how to deal with diversity. You got to understand how to deal with tolerance. You got to understand how to deal with justice. You got to understand how to deal with the rule of law. All those things are different from our traditional society, which is more like a monarchy. The chief tell you everything. That's why we got to move away from our traditional society and embrace the Western society more because that's where our participatory democracy rests. And we got a lot to learn, my people. We got a lot to learn. You know, and we're all young. We're talking about Jeremiah Kuhn, he's young. Casta is young. You can see from what, what Casta is saying. And that's the only problem with young people being leaders. Emotion. Judgment. You know? Reaction. Action. All those things are issue with young people. You can see it in Casta. If you go on Casta page, you will see I wrote there. So how is all of this what you're saying? of any public concern. Is it necessary to bring all these things up to public? That the people hate him, Joe Boca own party people don't like him, and, and he didn't even come in anything by himself. You know, he wanted to spell all the lies. People say he well, he took they took Boca to Ghana and offered Boca 30 to 50 million dollars to make Casa VP. You know, so what? My only question is, so what? That way you get emotional and all of that for? That way you get emotional for? I already told you from a different party. You from ALP. Maybe the people in Unity Party don't like ALP because Boca like you doesn't mean the other people in the party like you. The politics. The people feel you stepping on their interests. You know the people will not be in a party and we sign their name to be with a party just to be in the party. They're there for interest. They got personal interests they need to promote too. That's why they're in the party. So if you come and want to join the people party, expect them to love you with open arms you got a serious problem, you see? And this is the problem with our young young people leading our country. You know, you got to know how to handle issues. You got to know how to handle crisis. Now, if he was a member of the United Party from Ab Initio and was supporting them and wanted to be Joseph Boca right here, man, he who get mad at the other people in the party that are jealous of him. They're trying to throw rash in everything he did. But he's from a different party. The people don't trust him. The people don't trust a political leader. The whole coalition thing, they don't know you broke it apart. Let's be realistic. Because Ben and I, you started with this a false allegation about tampering with a framework document. Ben and I started with going to court and all of that. You see, he was a trouble, troublemaker. And can't start coming from that camp. So should the people accept you like a loving man, give you kudos and hugs and kisses and all of that? No. You have enemies. You have enemies. 
people will lie on you say you 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 George we are supporter because you're a flip flopper. You gave the people the cause to do that. One minute you're supporting George we are the next minute you is enemy. One minute you're supporting somebody else, next minute you're the enemy. You too opinionated for a politician. Some there are certain things you can't say even if you want to say it. If you're running for position. Because you need everybody in the country to vote for you. You know, you come here, you say, you don't want to see this here and come on your show. Why you do that? If you watch a show, he tell people, oh, you see this here, we don't want you here. Why will you do that? You sounded that, that Gilman, that, that, that tribalist Gilman, when I went on his show. He said, Chester, we don't want you. Oh, get out of my show. How you do that to me? I come to listen to what you say. Maybe I will like what you say or not. You don't know that. You just assume I'm your enemy. Get off my show, Jesse. I'm like, this is a tribalist. Are you doing it because of Congo? So you don't want a Congo Jesse on your show? Why all the other Congo people can come to your show but not Jesse? Why? Because I'm not scared of you. You cannot bow into you and say I'll bow to you. So you say, Chester, I'm gonna get off your show. You don't know whether I like you or not. They see me a caster. Caster see people need say, oh, see this here, don't come my show. When he said that, I was like, oh no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Then you say you're a Christian, you can't do that. A Christian cannot drive people away. You invite your enemies to come to you so they can hear the word. Especially you talking the word. Why you want to drive them away? If the people looking for light and come to you, whether the CDC or not, everybody may not be your enemies. But when you put everybody in a box and say, all the people are my enemy, then you got a problem. Because it's your job to go out and break barriers, open doors, connect people. That's leadership. That's leadership. But when you start seeing all the men from another party, you can't come on show, you can't do this, that's a serious problem. And what Costa said, that, that broke my heart. That just showed that, yes, he is immature. He is immature. Because as a leader, you want to change minds. You want to open doors. You want to break barriers. How you break it if you the mean one shunning people away from you? No, you can't do that. Just as Jesus, when people are blind, when people are backwards, when people can't see, they are like little children. And that's what Jesus said. Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God. When you are blind, you are a child. When you are ignorant, you are a child. Because you can't see. You can't see. Until you get education and your eyes open, then you say, damn, I used to do things that way that were wrong. You yourself will see the change in you. You will know you can't go back to doing some of the things you used to do because you are a renewed person. So it doesn't matter how Jesus teaches us. You see why Jesus teaching is simple, but great. That one makes him a great teacher. Because he's a teaching applied in every situation where it exists. And in a state of ignorance, in a state of blindness, in a state of no knowledge and wisdom and understanding, you are a baby because you can be lied to, you can be misled, you can be manipulated, you can be deceived, and you can be crushed. Just crushed. And you wouldn't know why, why you are crushed. You know something was wrong because you will suffer the pain, but you will not know why. 
you keep asking yourself, why? Why did this thing happen to me? Why? But you're not intelligent enough to put one and one together to make two, to add the dots together. Every situation, I want to call it dots. When they say you got to put the dots together, every situation in your life is a little dot. Okay? Your friend lied to you and connive with somebody else who deceived you and betrayed you that you trusted and you didn't know and you didn't know this happened okay and you suffer hurt and pain from it but during the course of the year now over the years now as time go by you see these two guys who connive against you how they working together how they behaving together. So that you got three dots now. You got a dot of the friend. You got a dot of the other friend. You got a dot of the betrayal. So that three dots you got right there. Then you got a dot of you being betrayed. That four dots. So as an intelligent man, as you go through life and start seeing these guys, that's what they say, you put the dots together. You see this guy talking to the other guy, they're so friendly. And during your time, they were bitter enemies. Now all of a sudden they're friends. After you go to dinner, screw you up and mess you up now, they're all of a sudden friends. And there's no possible way they could be friends by the way they behave in the, in the past. Now you're looking at them. You put in those two dots together, you say, damn. Then you look at your situation. You see how the guy so friendly so, and they were so bitter against me during my case that brought me down. Then you begin to put the dots together. So that starts. You put this dot together, that dot together. Then it begin to make sense in your mind to say, oh, did these guys do something to me? Did these guys lie to me? Did they connive with each other for money against me to betray me? That I will put the dots together. Everything don't happen right away. Because when things happen, you are ignorant to it. You may not know what happened. But over time, as you study the situation, and if you really want to know why you fail, what caused you to fail, it will irk you all your life. You all want to know why. Then you will watch everybody that were involved in your case and see how they behave over the years. And if you notice different things or hear about different things through the grapevine or through rumor, and then you begin to put dust together, one and one together. Say, oh, these people connive against me to lie to me, to betray me, to destroy me. And that's what it means to put the dust together. So in every aspect of our lives, even in our country, we put the dots together. Why is Liberia so backwards? Why is our leadership so bad? Why is our society as it is? Our society not good? Our society needs to be overhauled. We got some terrible behaviors. We got some terrible attitudes. We got some terrible ways that are corrupt. Just border, not even border, like just damn right corrupt. Just corrupt. And we got to learn to change those ways because apparently we do not have, nor does it seem we, like we're getting any leaders that will make changes in our lives. This is Samuel Wicker. But my man, what happened to you? Look, he been trying to get. He went somewhere. He couldn't get on. But anyway, everybody gotta ask themselves. Take a step back and ask yourself, what's wrong with us? In every aspect of our society, something is wrong. Our leadership corrupt. Our leadership full of war laws and war criminals. And we do not see that it is in our own deficit to have these people as our leaders. Let me see where my 
correspondent in Liberia once. Now, what happened to you, man? We've been waiting for you all morning. Man, I've been I'm, I'm at, a, at a table of justice here. A uh, uh, few group of, of, of women came to the teach on the the, the uh, because one had justice. They called for justice, but today but the police talk about uh, that this girl was 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 stopped multiple times. So that, that they used for hairline, but now the network since they are trying to get it out to come as far as a full flu drug and get it in network. Which girl so most of the women left already. That they are represented in 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 one of the judge's office waiting for a redress. So I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't videotape. I want to interview some of them, but I couldn't get a network straightened. But Sam, which girl so was far, A full flow. What and the about justice. Hold on, Sam. Hold on, hold on. Say that. Which, which girl was stabbed? You talking about uh, uh, Scott Dog? This girl, uh, uh, Charlotte. Charlotte Musu, the, 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 the former chief justice. Charlo. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the protest for her? Yeah, yeah. So that reporter said uh, it was stopped multiple times on the autopsy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what but, then, but then I couldn't, I couldn't get them. The, the phone couldn't come on the network so bad. So so what were the women saying? What did just they got this, just this, the network just down the time. I'm way up for flow. What did the women want? Oh Lord, I lost him again. So we hear there's another group of women protesting this morning for Shalo Musu, the daughter of Gloria Scott, who was stabbed. And according to my corresponding, the autopsy report from the police state that she was stabbed multiple times. So uh, now these women are at the Temple of Justice protesting for justice. When Sam come back on, he will come back on. Let me remove him. So the, 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 the reception is bad over there. That way he hasn't come on. He's been trying to get me to interview some of the women there who are protesting. But that was going on in Monrovia this morning. It's almost 8 o'clock and my time to get out. So we know that what Costa did, let me just reiterate everything I talked about this morning. Our president is in America. We don't know why he's there. We don't know whether he's there because of this what Wagner group of terrorists that is terrorizing West Africa. And they have Liberia targeted. And America is concerned because of her interest toward and in Liberia, okay? Two, Henry Carter, plight for the presidency of the Republic of Liberia. You know, he got to understand that this shit he in is politics. It's deep and bitter politics. There's no friendship in politics. You better stand your grounds and know who your allies are and work with them. Because if you're coming from another party, at initial, Henry Casa was not a supporter of Unity Party. He did not support Borka in the beginning. Now all of a sudden he's supporting Borka. But still, he's not a member of Borka Party. He said, oh, I'm loyal to Borga. I love Borga. I've done this and that for Borga. Why haven't you joined Unity Party? That's the first question. So you do all of that, but you're still not a member of Unity Party. You're a member of your power party. Okay? So how come now your name mysteriously comes out to be vice president? And all this come about after Borka goes to Ghana. Me, I have nothing against Casa. He's qualified. I think he's a little immature. I think there's a lot he needs to learn. But he's better than most of the people leading Liberia today. He's far better than most of the people. He got common sense. He got education. He knows right from wrong. And many of the times, Casa speak against wrong. 
Okay? Sometimes his emotion, his expressions make you scared. Because when people are young, they act in certain ways when they got power, they don't think. They act rashly. And the thing is right at a time. But sometimes it may not be right because you didn't take that extra time to think before you act. Okay? So, Casa has a problem. He's from the ARP and wants to be vice president. And the people in the university party that supported Borka, Tommy Memorial, many of them don't feel they can trust him. It's a trust issue. It's a trust issue. Many librarians got trust issue with Costa. Okay, it's a trust issue. It's not a competency issue. It's not an education issue. It's not whether he can do the job or not. It's a trust issue. It will bring this guy to us. Can we trust him? And many of them, <clears throat> whether it's jealousy or not, they will rely on that trust issue because they got an issue to rely on. Okay? And lastly, this human rights case that go on in our country, this report, is terrible. It's totally terrible. It reflects badly on our nation that our country is a safe haven for gangsters and perpetrating gangsterism. Also, the Musukat, the Musukat case and the killing her daughter are all part of this gangsterism issue in our country. Because the report came out, it talked about extra judicial killing arbitrary and unlawful killings, extreme police brutality, no investigation of cases. Unlawful arrests and detentions. All these things going on in that report. So here we are now with the same incident this morning. There's a protest going on right now, as you speak, at the, at the Justice Ministry. Because the autopsy report has come out that Shalom Musu died of service tab wound. And that was the allegation all along. There were no missing parts. There were no body parts missing or stolen, nothing. She was stabbed to death. So now we know there is no cause for ritualistic killing. All her body parts were intact and she was stabbed. And the women protesting this morning because they want justice. And we all should want justice. Because our country has run amok with criminality, lawlessness, and warlords. My class is done. It's 8 o'clock. Have a good morning. And I'll talk to you later because, I mean, it's 7 o'clock. I know I say 8 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock. Have a good morning. And I hope you enjoy my class. I'll see you tomorrow morning. May the Lord bless our country and keep it safe. Because without Him, we don't know where we're going.